Hi, Andrew. So when it comes to capturing spatial data and then integrating it into a GIS, probably, the, well, definitely the cheapest, but the best option is to use QGIS and the cell phone application to work with and interact with that spatial data called QField. So what I've done here as a demonstration is to set up a QGIS project and I've got a layer for, for graves and then I've got a couple other layers just for context as well as two base layers which will turn on and off at different scales. So this will happen in the project. So if I zoom out beyond, I think it's 10,000, the OSM standard layer turns on and if the minute I zoom in past 10,000, that uh, layer turns off and the Google Hybrid layer turns on and, and this functionality will be replicated on the QField app. Okay, so what I need to do is just package this for QField. So that's what I'll do next. So I'm just going to go to my plugin and then package for QField. I'll go and choose a location to store it. And this is part of the process. We, we package for QField, actually on my desktop. And then the, the user will need to load it into a specific location on their phone after they've downloaded the app. So let me go and find my export folder, which is called export. And then say create. Okay, so now that has been exported. So what I need to do is plug my cell phone in to my desktop. Okay, so I have just plugged in. So let's go see uh, where it is. So there's my cell phone. And then I need to go and get that folder that it was exported to. So it is on my desktop in a folder called Cemeteries. Where is it? the export folder so i'm going to copy this entire folder let me just rename it first just rename it so i'll copy that and then on my cell phone so now these the folders that i'm going to copy it to will only appear once the view field application is um, installed on the user's cell phone and in this case it's an android device we go to the android folder data and we're looking for a folder called OpenGIS Q field. And this is where they would need to, to copy the folder to. So you can email it to them. They can unzip it and then copy the folder to this location and then paste it here. So it is Android data, OpenGIS Q field files, imported projects, and there it is there. Once that folder is on the device, they'll be able to open up that project on their phone. Okay, so I have downloaded uh, the application onto an Android device and it's called QField. So they need to go to the Google Play Store or yeah, I think it's called the Google Play Store and download QField. So now that I've copied that folder into my folder on my phone with the application also installed, I can go to open local file, imported projects, and then it's export cemeteries and grave locations. That was the project I exported. And this is what you get. It's a duplicate of the actual project on QGIS. And what we can do is we can access the, the uh, legend by clicking on the top left hand button. And you will see that there's some information there. So we've got the graves, churches, cemeteries, and then the two base layers that we added. And let's just demonstrate how that works. If I zoom in, so you'd, you'd navigate like you do, do on most of these applications using your finger and then uh, expand two fingers together to zoom in and then that's how you can zoom in and you'll see that once I zoom in past 10,000 the satellite imagery is shown because those two are set at different scales. Those two layers will need a cell phone data connection or a connection to the internet to render because they are not stored on the phone they are streamed in. Okay so let's have a look at um, capturing information. So let's say we want to capture information. You can capture information on your current position or you can capture it on screen now you can zoom to your current position by kicking on the clicking on the or tapping the screen where there's a little blue target in the bottom right hand corner now if i do that it's going to zoom me to my current location which is in cape town so we don't actually want to we're not interested in that um, but that just shows you how to get to your current location so you can see yourself as an active moving target on the screen so then what we'll do is we'll just zoom back to 
those symmetries and let's zoom in and go and capture something but before I do that I just want to actually no, I'm not going to worry about that so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture a new gravestone let's say so let's just zoom in and capture a gravestone now you can walk to that gravestone and then click on your current position so let's select first of all go back and start an editing session so we select graves start editing and then go back to the screen and you'll now see that there's a target now that target will allow you to digitize a location like this moving around so that central target on your screen will digitize that location or what you can do is select your current position by clicking on the blue target as I did earlier and then it'll capture your current location so if you go and stand next to that grave you should be able to capture your location that way so because I'm not in the field in that area I'm going to use this option so let's start by capturing a new feature so if you tap on the bottom right hand corner there's a green circle with a white target we click on that to start capturing a new feature now you'll see there's two um, tabs information and meta the meta tab is all information that is captured automatically okay and this is uh, the unique identifier latitude and longitude as well as the date captured and then the person capturing it which is a unique variable that needs to be set for each phone so mine's set to Ian Wilson but whoever the user is they will set their phone uh, variable to whatever their name is but if we go back to information this is what we want to capture so the name of the deceased so for instance we can type in a person's name here and then an ID number okay and there should be there's only 13 characters reserved then what you can also do is take a photograph of that actual grave so we're going to take a arbitrary photograph here Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll go to the other side and capture the reverse angle of that same grave. So assuming we're doing the same thing here. So we've taken two photographs. Now what we can do is click on the top left hand button to, to save that feature. And there it's been captured. And you can see in the background we have a new um, feature with the name of the person of the grave you've captured so we've captured that one let's capture another one for interest sake so name some number and we are not going to take photographs we'll just assume that we've captured that one too and then you will see that you have information captured so what we then do is we would then synchronize this data so the client would need to send their folders, zip them and send them back to us and we would then um, synchronize that with our database. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to close Q just down. There we go. Okay, so assuming I'm back at my desk now or the client has sent me the folder via email what I will then do is, and it might be quite big, so they might have to use a um, data sharing facility. So let's just go and grab that folder. So going to my phone, data, same place. So nothing's changed there. The only thing that would have changed is because we took some photographs, uh, another uh, folder will be created for the photographs to be stored in. Let's go there and copy these. So copying that folder, go back to the project, and uh, let's just create a new folder, downloads, and paste. Then we go back to our project. Now what we want to do is we want to synchronize that data into our existing layers. So what we should be able to do is go to Q field synchronize from Q field go to that folder we've just downloaded and where is it series downloads so that's the folder select that folder 
synchronize. And then once synchronized, those datas will be th those those records in that um, layer will be added. So let's quickly open up the attribute table. There we go. And there's only two photographs taken. The location, which was in the DCIM folder. And then what we should be able to do, we should be able to see those photographs. If we go and click on one of these, go to the folder option, there are the photographs taken. The form option, I beg your pardon. Okay, so there's the information. So now if your client goes and captures thousands of points and takes lots of photographs, they will have big folders, but we'll be able to synchronize those into a project. And then at some point, if they need a printout, go and um, yeah, create layouts for them. So let's show. Here we go. Maybe zoom in a bit closer for this particular map. Change the scale down to... I don't know, 1,000. And that's, that's pretty much how you do it. So it's not a straightforward thing. The project has to be set up correctly. Um, and if your client is interested, let me know. And uh, we can move forward and create a nice project for them. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Cheers.